I welcome all of you to the class. Today we are going to discuss the application and solutions of Euler equations of motion. In the previous class, while discussing the kin kinetics of rigid bodies in three dimensions, we have derived the Euler equations of motion to understand the motion of a rigid body in three dimensions. And in the kinetics of rigid bodies in three dimensions, using the Euler equations of motion, somehow we need to see how we can use these equations to explain the motion of the rigid body. And this topic will deal with it. We'll define the application of the Euler equations of motion, okay? And the solutions of the Euler equations of motion, okay? They are very important for us to understand. Now, as far as the applications are concerned, or the application from application point of view, or from the point of view of uh, what we call as um, uh, the solution point of view, we'll be first of all taking up, or we'll be summing it up in the form of the motion of the gyroscope, or what we call as the gyroscopic motion. Okay. So it means as far as the application portion is concerned and the solutions of Euler equations are concerned, both these topics will be studied while studying the motion of the gyroscopes. That is, in other words, we can say the application of the kinetics of rigid bodies in three dimensions is gyroscope and the solutions of the Euler equations of motion or gyroscopic motion are in the form of what we call as the study precision and torque free motion. I mean to say is, as far as the application point is concerned, the application of the Euler equation is concerned, the application of Euler, the application of the Euler equation of motion is the understanding of the motion of the gyroscope. And as far as the solutions of the Euler equations of motion are concerned, are the solutions of the gyroscopic equations, that is the study precision motion and the torque free motion, which we will be taking up. So it is actually, we can in other words say that the gyroscopes or the motion of the gyroscope is first of all, the application of the Euler equation of motion in understanding the motion of the rigid bodies in three dimensions, number one. Number two is the solutions of the gyroscopic equations, okay? In, in the form of the study precision and the torque free motion are actually the solutions of the Euler equations of motion. So somewhat, we can say that this topic reduces to the understanding the motion of the gyroscopes, okay? Now, what is a gyroscope? This is something important. Then later on, after understanding what gyroscope is, what are the equations, how Euler equation is used to define or describe the motion of the gyroscope? Okay, and what are the solutions of equations of motion? That is solutions of Euler's equations. That is steady precision and torque free motion. After understanding this much of the concept, we have a very, very important concept then coming up, the applications of the gyroscopes. What is, an, what is the application of gyroscope? Where are these gyroscopes used? That's very important. I have been, you know, uh, re removing the misconception among the students they say that there is a gyroscopic instrument used in the aircrafts. I said, no, it's not correct. There is a gyroscopic effect, which I have discussed with you in, in the previous classes. When the rotor of the aircraft rotates clockwise, the aircraft starts taking a right turn, whether the nose is up or the nose is down, that's a gyroscopic effect. That is what we have discussed. But the question is, what is the application of the gyroscope? From your mobile phones to space shuttles, these gyroscopes have a wide range of applications, which we will be discussing in the later parts of the chapter or the later parts of this topic under the headings of the applications of the gyroscopes. So if I cut this long story short, and in a nutshell, we can say that the applications and solutions of Euler equations of motion is simply understanding the motion of the gyroscope, okay? So it's the, it's, it's the understanding of the motion of the gyroscope. If we understand the motion of the gyroscope, it will be the application of Euler equation of motion as well as the solutions of the Euler equations of motion in the form of steady precision of the gyroscope and torque free motion of the gyroscope. So it all reduces to the understanding the motion of the gyroscope. Now, what is a gyroscope? Before we take up 
what gyroscope means, very quickly we will revise the Euler equations of motion. Euler equations of motion are to be kept well in front of us before we start using them. In the previous class, exactly, we have derived these Euler equations of motion. Okay. And we had the moments of a rigid body about a point which some, somewhere we took point P. In other case, we took point C, the center of gravity. Okay. The, the summation of all the moments about a point C, which is the center of gravity. Okay. Was coming out equal this term that I will write as mx i cap or summation mx i cap, okay, plus myj cap plus mzk cap, mzk cap. And we know if you recall the previous equation, the Euler equation of motion mx was equal to this or summation of mx the result resultant of all the moments along x-axis was this okay our my was this and our mz okay was this term okay so these terms are simply the terms which represent the Euler equation of motion in three dimensions or we can say that these represent the motion of a rigid body in three dimensions okay from these equations we will obtain the force acting on the rigid body from these equations we'll obtain the acceleration of the rigid body we'll obtain the velocity of the rigid body we'll obtain the impulse of a rigid body okay we'll obtain uh, the momentum of a rigid body we'll obtain the angular acceleration of a rigid body angular velocity of the rigid body okay and in fact the angular momentum of the rigid body is to be obtained from these equations. And once you obtain all these terms associated with the rigid body, what we are actually obtaining, we are obtaining simply what we call as the, the we are actually describing the motion of the rigid body with the help of these equations. Okay. A, a, a brief revision that's written at the top, a revision, because we have already derived these equations, Euler equations of motion. We know that Ix is the second moment of inertia second mass moment of inertia about x axis which we have been written as i sub xx i y represents the second moment of uh, second moment of mass about y axis which we have been written as i y y and same is the case with z axis which we have been representing as i z z we know omega x omega y and omega z they are the components of the angular velocity of the rigid body along x y and z axis and omega x dot omega y dot and omega z dot they are simply the derivatives of the angular velocity about x-axis, about y-axis and z-axis. We are quite familiar with this equation. We are, this equation is well known to us okay, as we have derived this equation. So we call this as an Euler equation of motion. So this equation, these equations, you know, these Euler equations of motion are to be used in describing the motion of a rigid body. That's the gyroscope as far as the present topic is concerned. So please keep this equation in mind as we have, as we are acquainted with this equation. Now, so what is the gyroscope? So now the topic reduces to the gyroscope. The object that is in front of us, this is called a gyroscope. And if you recall our lecture one of kinetics of rigid bodies in three dimensions, the rigid body, what I was talking in that, uh, video i was trying to balance a rigid body and i was uh, quite uh, often using the term the rigid body the rigid body needs to be balanced it's not balancing again as the gravity the gravitational forces are pulling it down okay and then we uh, tied thread to it gave motion to the central disc this disc okay this disc we attached thread to the shaft okay and we rotated it we pulled the thread as we pulled the thread the central disc attained some angular velocity okay and as a result of that angular velocity this entire system we call this as a rigid body this entire rigid body balanced itself and you know today we will be saying that this rigid body from your uh, lecture one video and the one that is in front of us exactly the same this is called the gyroscopes okay this is the gyroscope it has versatile applications as far as uh, the entire the uh, field of engineering and or applied sciences is concerned. It does have applications that we'll be discussing later on. But the object that's in front of us, the rigid body that we are looking at, this is called 
the gyroscope. Now let's first of all get acquainted with the terminology of the gyroscope. What are the different terms that we use in it? So if you look at the gyroscope, we are having an outer ring. Okay, this is called the outer thimble. This is called outer ring or outer thimble. Okay, this inner one is called inner thimble. This is inner thimble or inner ring you can call this as. Okay, this is inner thimble. And the one that's at the center, this is called the central disc. Okay, this is called the disc. This is called the disc. Fine, there are three things. A gyroscope has three things. It has an outer thimble, outer ring, an inner thimble or an inner ring, and it does have a disc, okay? Before we go ahead in understanding the motion of this gyroscope, how does the gyroscope work? We have to get acquainted with the terminology. That's very important for us. Now, look at look at the gyroscope. Look at this figure, figure eight. This is called reference position of a gyroscope. Okay, this is the reference of a gyroscope. Okay, so before we start the motion of the gyroscope, the gyroscope is set in this position. Okay. This outer thimble and inner thimble are parallel to each other and lie exactly on the plane of our paper. Fine. And the orientation of the disc is as such that its face is exactly upwards along the z axis. Okay. Now we are treating a ground frame of reference and we assume that the origin of the ground frame of reference is at point O. Let this point O be the origin of our ground frame of reference. And let's treat an axis in this direction and call this as the ground frame of reference x axis. And an axis in y direction, let's call that as the ground frame of reference y axis. And an axis along z direction, let's call this as the ground frame of reference z axis. So we have the three axes. We are having an axis x, we are having an axis y, we are having an axis z. Okay, x axis, y axis, and z axis. These are the three axes of the gyroscope and these three axes are the axes that are set with respect to the ground frame of reference. And we assume that the ground frame of reference is, an, is at origin. And what frame of reference we by the way call as a ground frame of reference? The frame of reference which is at rest, which neither translates nor rotates. Okay, we fix a frame of reference on the ground in such a way that the frame of reference neither translates nor rotates that frame of reference we call as a ground frame of reference. So here we are assuming that our ground frame of reference is centered at the center of the disc. Okay. Our ground frame of reference is centered at the center of the disc. Okay. And it is in such a way that it's Z, Y and X axis do not change at all. They maintain their orientation. Okay. As the gyroscope rotates, as the gyroscope undergoes the motion, the ground X axis, the ground Y axis and the ground Z axis do not undergo any sort of rotation, do not undergo any sort of transformation. They maintain their coordinates. They maintain their axes. That's X, Y and Z, capital X, capital Y and capital Z uh, maintain their orientations. Okay. That's our ground frame of reference. Now look at the motion. Now this is the figure on the left hand side. That's figure A. This is the reference position of a gyroscope. Before we start the motion, we assume that the gyroscope is set in this configuration. Okay, this configuration. This is what we call as the reference position of a gyroscope. Now, look, as the gyroscope moves, what type of motions it can have? Essentially, the gyroscope does not have the translation motion. Let's first of all clear it. The gyroscope does not have, does not have the translational motion. Does not possess translational motion translational motion okay it does not have translational motion what do you mean by saying that the gyroscope does not have translational motion we mean to say is that the gyroscope does not translate along x axis it does not translate along y axis and it certainly does not translate along z axis so there is no 
Okay. What motion the gyroscope can undergo? That's the question. Okay. And it's very quite easy to predict. Now look, first of all, this look at the motion of the disc. Okay. Let me remove these all. Let me clean this diagram first. Clear all these diagrams. Look at the motion of this disc. The motion of the disc is the rotational motion. Okay. About its own axis. This is the axis of this is the axis of the gyroscope. This is the axis of the gyroscope. Okay. Gyroscope always the disc of the gyroscope always rotates about this axis. Okay. It always the motion of the disc is just the rotation about this central axis CC dash. Okay. It maintains its motion about the axis CC dash. That means that gives us an indication that initially if we draw a line here, if we take a line here, if we draw a line here before the start of the motion, okay, before the start of the motion of this disc, before the start of the motion of this disc, if we have a line, say, for example, line OD or, 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 or this line itself that's drawn here, let's focus our attention on this line that is line OD. If we focus our attention on this line OD, before the start of the motion, before the start of the motion, before this disc undergoes rotation about CC dash, let's suppose this line OD in its reference position is along negative Y axis. Now, if we are given some little rotation to this disc about the axis CC dash, then after some time you will find that this disc, that this O dash, OD will reach here. This D was initially here. Now this D will reach here. Okay, this line OD was initially like this before the start of the motion. But as we are giving rotation to this disc along the axis CC dash, then OD moves by some angle. It describes some angle, okay, as it moves from OD position, original position to this OD position, new position. The angle that it describes is defined by the term psi. We call this as the psi rotation. We define it by the term psi as is given here. Look here. Okay, this is here. The psi is here. This is the rotation of the psi that we are having here describes the rotation of what? It describes the rotation of our disc. So as the disc undergoes rotation, as this disc undergoes rotation about CC dash axis, then the angle that this disc describes is, de is, is, is defined by psi. So first angle is angle psi, which describes the, the rotation of, it describes the rotation of disc about its axis. It describes the uh, rotation of disc. It describes the rotation of disc. Okay, I will write it. It describes the rotation of disc. This is the first thing. Okay. It describes the rotation of the disc about CC dash. Number one. Number two is the another angle. Another angle is very important to describe. That is, if you look at the inner thimble that we are having in pink color right now, Okay, now this pink colored inner thimble is free to rotate about an axis, about this axis, passing through BB dash, about axis YY dash. That is, we mean to say that this inner thimble that is in pink color is free to rotate about this Y axis. Okay, this is plus y, this minus y. About this axis, which is passing through BB dash. Okay, I am repeating it. The inner disc is free to rotate about CC dash, and we have described its angle as angle psi. And the inner thimble is free to rotate about the axis BB dash. Okay, and its rotation we are describing about an axis which is passing through BB dash. And if you look at its overall rotation, the sense of its rotation about an axis BB dash will be like this. It will be rotating like this. This will be its sense of rotation. Okay. It will, this will be its sense of rotation. Okay. It will be rotating about uh, the axis BB dash or maybe in the opposite direction, but the sense will be the rotation in its case will be always along Y Y dash. Now look as this, BB dash uh, uh, initially is this as this inner thimble is in this reference position. It is parallel to the plane of our board. Okay, parallel to the plane of our screen is our inner thimble. But as this inner thimble is given a little amount of rotation about BB dash axis, 
that is if it's moved in this if it's uh, rotated in this in this direction so its motion initially it was plane initially it was like this okay now as we are moving it out it will move from this position to this position okay as is here it will move to this position okay so the angle that it describes right now the angle that it describes the angular motion of this okay inner thimble you look at in this figure okay neglect for some time the rotation of the outer thimble we are not talking about the motion of the outer thimble for us outer thimble right now is parallel to the plane okay i am not describing its motion right now i am talking about the inner thimble the inner thimble was initially parallel to the outer thimble as is here outer thimble and inner thimble they are con concentric initially now as this inner thimble is moved out as this inner thimble is uh, from this position this point c prime was initially here okay now as you are moving this point c as you are moving this rotating this inner thimble about an axis bb dash so it means with respect to the ground z axis it is defining the angle theta so the second term that comes to us is what we call as the angle theta i will write here the second thing we have the angle theta theta defines the rotation of it defines the rotation of it defines the rotation of inner thimble theta defines the rotation of inner thimble okay this is fine after defining the motion of the disc by psi motion of inner thimble by theta we are left with the rotation of the outer thimble now look at the motion of the outer thimble the outer thimble is free to rotate about an axis can you think for some time what can be the axis about which this outer thimble is free to rotate yes it is the z axis like this the outer thimble is free to rotate about the z axis okay the inner thimble is free to rotate about y axis okay and the outer thimble is free to rotate about this z axis fine so as we are given giving motion to the outer thimble as we give motion to the outer thimble okay as we give motion to the outer thimble the sense of its rotation since it's free to rotate about z axis the sense of its rotation will be like this this will be its sense of rotation it will be on a horizontal circle i mean to say or it may, it will be on the horizontal circle in the opposite direction okay both ways it is but essentially the sense of rotation of this outer thimble will be on a horizontal circle that is initially this point b focus your attention on the point b before we set the motion the point b is on the y axis but as we are now giving it motion in this direction as we are giving it motion in this direction along horizontal circle this point b will certainly come out this point b was initially here now as we are moving it along the z z axis the point b comes here it describes an angle this much that's called angle phi the third angle that we have the angle phi angle phi it describes the rotation of outer thimble so angle phi defines the rotation of it defines the rotation of outer thimble okay so we have three angles these are the three angles in terms of which will be describing the motion of the gyroscope will be describing the motion of the gyroscope in terms of angle psi that describes the rotation of its disc we describe it in terms of theta that describes the rotation of its inner thimble and in terms of phi that describes the rotation of its outer thimble and you know these three angles they are called eilerian angles these are called eilerian angles okay these are called eilerian angles and quite beautiful is the fact that the motion of a gyroscope is understood in terms of this these eilerian angles eilerian angles are very important as far as the motion understanding of the gyroscope is concerned so the fact is that where i am going to take you is the understanding of the equations of motion of a gyroscope but understanding the terminology is very important and for understanding the terminology we have understood the three types of angles the three angles in fact in the gyroscope that is the angle psi angle theta and angle phi and if we are questioned what are these eilerian angles 
we can simply say that as far as the angle phi is concerned, angle phi describes the rotation of the disc, angle theta describes the rotation of the inner thimble, and angle uh, phi describes the rotation of the outer thimble. And these three angles that are used to describe the motion of the gyroscope, these are called the Eilerian angles. Now, once we finish the concept of these Eilerian angles, uh, we'll be going ahead and the quite important fact for us is to understand is to have these two figures in mind the relative motion of the reference position of the gyroscope that is this position okay that is this position the reference position and this very position at which an arbitrarily drawn position where we are defining angle phi theta and psi this is important now uh, going forward and some important terms that do come in understanding the motion of the gyroscopes are the three important terms. One is precision, second is mutation, and the third one is sipping. We'll often, we'll often be talking about a gyroscope is processing, and it's mutating, and it's sipping. These are the technical terms that define the motion of a gyroscope. Precision, mutation, and the spin. Now, as far as the precision, spin, and the mutation are concerned, precision, spin, and mutation, they are simply the derivatives of Eilerian angles. This is important. They are the derivatives. They're, they are the derivatives of Eilerian angles. The derivatives of Eilerian angles are called precision, mutation, and the spin. And you know, uh, we have defined the first angle that was angle psi. Okay, and you know what angle psi represents. Angle psi was representing the rotation of our disc. Okay, the derivative of this, the derivative of this psi, the derivative of the rotation of this psi represents the angle. Okay, psi represents the angle, angle of rotation of the disc, and the derivative of the angle of rotation of the disc, this is called a spin. This we call a spin. So when we say the gyroscope is sipping, what does that mean? That means that its disc is rotating. Okay. The second angle that we described was this angle theta. Okay. Angle theta. This angle theta was describing the rotation of what? It was describing the angle of rotation of the inner thimble. The derivative of this, the derivative of this theta, okay. The derivative of the theta, the der derivative of the rotation of the angle theta okay or the angle of the inner thimble rate of change of the angle theta of the inner thimble this is called mutation this is what we call as mutation the rate of change of angle theta this is called mutation and the third one we use it angle phi to describe the rotation of the outer thimble the rate of change of the angle phi the rate of change of the angle of the outer thimble this is called precision Uh, this is called the precision. This is called precision. Okay, so there is a term when someone when it's written, a gyroscope is processing as it, it, it will be said, the gyroscope is processing processing means that its outer thimble is rotating. When it says the gyroscope is mutating, it means the inner thimble is rotating. When it will be said that gyroscope is sipping, what does that mean? That means that its inner disc is rotating. Now, two important things out here, precision, mutation, and sipping. Well, in the kinetics of rigid bodies, I have been forcing uh, the fact that when we take a derivative of a physical quantity, this derivative is to be taken with respect to some frame of reference. Okay. Now, if we are defining the spin, mutation, and precision, and taking their derivatives, sorry, if we are dis <clears throat> sorry, if we are discussing sipping mutation and precision as the derivatives of uh, psi, theta, and phi, with respect to which frame of reference we are taking these derivatives, I leave as an exercise to the students to think for some time. Okay, though I will answer this question hopefully in the next class, where we'll be using these derivatives. But till then, I leave as an exercise to the students to think, with respect to which frame of reference we are taking these derivatives. Number one. Number two is understanding one more thing that is 
as now the gyroscope is undergoing the motion as it the gyroscope spins mutates or processes apart from the ground frame of reference x y and z which we have already discussed in, in form of capital letters we use one more frame of reference and attach that frame of reference with the inner thimble very very important is the concept the fact is that in order to describe the motion of the rigid body in order to describe the motion of the gyroscope apart from using our ground frame of reference calling this sorry calling this as our calling this as our y axis calling this as our x axis as we had called it previously and calling this as our x axis z axis sorry previously we had called it so we are calling this as capital x axis ground frame of reference x axis ground frame of reference y axis and ground frame of reference z axis okay apart from this ground frame of reference we do use one more frame of reference that is a rotating frame of reference because the motion of a gyroscope is the motion of the gyroscope is the motion of a rigid body in two frames of reference i am recalling it the motion of a gyroscope is the motion of a rigid body or the motion of a gyroscope is understood as the motion of a rigid body in two frames of reference one is a ground frame of reference and the another frame of reference that we use is the rotating frame of reference which is attached with the inner thimble which is attached with the inner thimble i am repeating it the ground frame of reference is like this okay it's fixed but the rotating frame of reference we are attaching with the inner thimble that's with the spink in such a way that we treat this to be our x axis we treat this to be our y axis and we treat this to be our z axis now look at or if i can change the colors to make it more uh, good for visualization purposes this we treat as our x axis this we treat as rotating frame of reference y axis and the last one we treat this to be our z axis okay such that the frames of reference the ground frame of reference and this rotating frame of reference have the same or origin o but the ground frame of reference is you know it's attached like this it's the ground frame of reference but we are attaching our rotating frame of reference which is represented by small x small y and small z we are attaching with the inner thimble okay so we are attaching it with the inner thimble it's being attached with the inner thimble while as we can okay that's fine we are attaching it with the inner thimble so we have two frames of reference the ground frame of reference and another frame of reference that's x y and z which is rotating with respect to the ground frame of reference if you look in terms of this rotating frame of reference and its relation with the ground frame of reference the overall motion of the gyroscope will be explained as the x as the applications of this eilerian equations of the motion and then onwards the solution of the eilerian equation will be carried forward in the form of steady precision and torque free motion so i hope this segment we should close here and we'll continue from here in the next class uh, thank you very much